Good morning, welcome to my YouTube channel, Lock Petition. If you're new here, what's up? We'll have a good time. If you are, you know, been here for a while, hey, what's up? I'm trying to figure out how to do some intro, so that's where we're at. So today video, we're gonna talk about my consistent frustration throughout several book communities on black horror or um, black mystery and thriller. Now, I don't claim to be a English major. I know that there might be things that I say in this video that may not be perceived well or looking through a more, I would say, like erudite, I can't even say the word, but more scholarly language people might have some criticism for and I welcome them I do want to have a conversation with non-black readers specifically I would say non-black and indigenous readers because when I see indigenous readers read black horror and mystery and thriller it's like what's understood don't need to be explained so i'm having this video to talk about this frustration but i also don't want to be out here just like let me explain this to you because technically i don't have to i am definitely doing this as a courtesy and I, I hate to say it like that but that's the only way i can make sense of it i'm consistently just frustrated so when we think about thriller mysteries and horror typically those crime fiction genres we typically think of big names we think of james Patterson. we think of stephen king we think of anne bright we think of kathy rice we think of karen slaughter what's in common here is that these are all white folks all of these people are white folk and we tend to judge how they create a story of crime fiction on people of color now a lot of times when i read specifically indigenous and black horror or indigenous and black crime fiction i go in it with a different lens on what crime fiction is i feel that a lot of readers who are not indigenous and not black typically read indigenous and black literature using that lens of comparison to Stephen King or James Patterson. I'm gonna tell you right here, right now, that is where you messed up. That is where you messed up, absolutely. So I'll give you some examples. In indigenous and black crime fiction, you don't need to have eeriness or suspenseness for something to be horrific. For example, if an author is talking about the intergenerational trauma and the present day effect of boarding schools on their community that is horrific that is some scary shit that is something that just makes you have to take a pause have to think about it that right there to someone can put them in their body make them think about family members who have been in boarding schools family members that they have seen struggle because of the legacy of boarding schools, that in itself is scary as shit. If an author comes and write a book about plantations and a character is visiting a plantation and spooky stuff is happening, that is traumatic, especially if you are a descendant of enslaved people. That right there is terrifying. The legacy of slavery is terrifying. I'm sure when any of y'all read nonfiction or fiction when they're discussing slavery i'm sure most of y'all are not like you know what this is a really good idea no this shit is terrifying so when y'all get on beyonce's internet beyonce giselle knows carter internet and be like oh that wasn't horror because it didn't talk about someone being murdered in present tense it didn't talk about a stalking thing it didn't talk about a cult thing that's been the real like catch 22 i wouldn't say catch 22 but it's been like one of the biggest tropes used in crime fiction as of late which is cult and it's like because it doesn't have those aspects of it then then it's not deemed to be horror then it's not deemed to be thriller then it's not deemed to have elements of mystery like i think we need to take time and think about who is setting the standards for crime fiction who is saying you know what when you do this and you do that that's not crime fiction but if you do this and you do that that is crime fiction 
fiction. We need to ask ourselves who is the measurement that we're using to just say something else is not or is. I've never read The Shining, but I've heard it's terrifying. I would never say, you know what? The Shining, that's not a horror. That's not a horror book at all. But you know, The Only Good Indians is one. They're both horror, different types of horror, different types of horror. But they're both horrific. I've seen people read The Only Good Indians, which has a lot of suspense in it wrapped in the story. It is definitely some creepy vibes throughout the story. And a lot of the moments of suspense and uncomfortableness is similar to what you would see in a Stephen King or James Patterson as far as like these are clear descriptions of something being horrific but then they'll go and read the night of the mannequins and be confused and be like this wasn't what I thought it was well what did you think it was like I, I just think we need to ask ourselves that and it's the same with like Tanana Reeve do someone will read the good house and be like wow there's elements of this, there's elements of that. I was scared at that part, I was scared at this part. And then they will read The Between by Tanana Do and be like, is this, is this really horror? And I don't know if people think that, you know, black readers are not seeing these things, but we are. Like, I'll look on Goodreads just like everybody else when I'm looking at a review of a book. And then I am seeing that there is a huge discrepancy of black reader thoughts on a book versus non-black reader thoughts on a book. For a great example, Nana by Brandon Mass. I keep saying Nana for some reason, but it could be Nana as well. I love that book. I have never made it a secret that I don't love that book. I truly love that book. There is some content warning that I put in my, my Goodreads review about that book. Overall, Chef Kit. When I was looking at the reviews, this was a couple months ago and even this morning. Looking at those reviews, there's a clear discrepancy of people in their um, their profile. I'm assuming these people identify as black. They are melanated folks. They also can be, you know, other BIPOC folks. So when I'm looking at these profiles, I'm like, okay, this is a melanated, this person is melanated. And they're like, you know, love the book. Da -da -da -da. Even if they love the book and had the same criticism that I had for the book, they acknowledge that, but also understanding the horrific parts of that book, understanding the suspensefulness of that book, understanding the thriller aspects of that book. They're looking like, okay, even though there's some things I may have not, you know, liked with the execution, the way certain characters are being described, maybe they're not rooting for certain characters, but still overall, these folks are understanding the assignment. When I look at profiles of people who I am making the assumption, I just want y'all to know, I am making the assumption that these people are, and I'm looking and I'm like, one star, two star, and going in dissertations about how they are not understanding this book and the thing about it is this this is not the first time we have had conversations about the importance of own voices this is not the first time we have had conversations about lack of nuances I'm just putting this video out because if you get nothing from this video I just want you to understand that crime fiction to a person of color to an indigenous person to a black person to a Latine person Crime fiction look different than westernized, white-centered crime fiction. And once you understand that, your reading experience, trust me, will be so much more valuable because y'all are out here comparing groups that are incomparable, that have different lenses on the world. There's also historical trauma that consistently get written in crime fiction from indigenous and black authors, consistently. So when you're saying this is not a crime fiction, not only are you insulting the actual purpose of that book, you're also being like, well, I guess slavery is not a, it's not a big deal. It's not horrid, it's not horrid to me. <laughs> that's what you're saying. And I know that's probably not what you're really trying to say, but that is how it's coming off. And you're probably like, you know, boarding schools, ooh, that got nothing to do with me. Mm. This person is talking about what Christopher Columbus did. Oh, oof. that's not really horrific. That's in the past. Like, I just think we need to take a step back and really analyze how we are approaching different books. I understand that I grew up in America 
where white is the standard therefore when i read a book by a white person i'm already knowing what i'm about to get into therefore unless there's something that's really impactful for me or something that really you know bothered me i'm gonna say something about it but i get so frustrated when non-black folks read books written by black folks specifically in crime fiction because that is what we're talking about y'all read these books and then y'all tell us it's not crime crime fiction. Pages of Haley discussed this in a live show that I was in and I also had this conversation with a friend like a year ago when Jordan Peele came out with um, Get Out and people were like oh this is comedy or or something they put it in a different category and Jordan Peele was like no this is horror period this is horror this is not what you trying to say it is this is horrific so I just need us to just be more cognizant on how we are viewing books just to just add just throw a little salt bay action I'm not asking for a lot just a salt bay action of reflection and critical thinking and nuance and I know we've talked about this before this is not the first time I'm not the first black person the first black woman to even talk about these things but because when we talk about crime fiction I tend to you know be with us I just really am getting tired of people just totally being disrespectful <laughs> viewing it I, I had to speak my truth on Beyonce Janelle's wait Giselle knows Carter internet let me know in the comment section below your thought and don't forget to like comment and subscribe because I do think that this is a conversation that I want to have in the comment section and I'm going to try to get back to people in probably like a week from now because I want to see them trickle in and you know get my thoughts on them and have space to respond if I choose to do so so yeah I just wanted to say that y'all have a good day talk to y'all later